Good morning, warriors. It's Lisa Wolf here, and today is Transparent Tuesday. And on Transparent Tuesday, um, especially with this week, it's um, mostly about self sabotage. And self sabotage is um, really things that trigger you, and they usually happen. It usually happens when things are going really good and you're going with your journey and you're living life abundantly and God is blessing you and you just, you're not used to things so good, you know? And I had to learn that, um, with, uh, because it reminds me of before I got sick, I was, uh, my life was going good. Like, start uh, like it, I was on top of my faith. I was um, doing good, like um, with my word, reading it, praying, um, and everything else in my life was revolving and evolving. And I would, I was, I was actually really happy. Did I have joy? Yes, at times, but I was mostly happy. And because things were happening um, with me, that's why I was happy. And it, it's easy to praise the Lord when awesome things are happening. And I didn't know. I kind of knew. You know what? I can't say I didn't know, but I did know that I was creating idols in my life. And the idols in my life were, of course, working out because I, even the weight vow was an idol in my life. And even though God was in it, I kind of used God's word to manipulate the reason why I was doing it and not really digging deep into why I was doing it. And I still had faith, but it was diminishing because I was so obsessed with the love that I was feeling that I had I had to tie it with some type of pain. And not like the type of pain that most people think of, but I didn't realize it until I got sick. And um, I had a lot of unforgiveness in my heart. I had a lot of expectations of people. I, I, I just idolized those people because they showed such strong perseverance to get through things. And I was filling that void of hurt and unforgiveness with work, with working out, going to concerts and all kinds of stuff when I should have been just going straight to the Lord. And even when um, I was working, I remember I would come, I would drive home just crying and I think I was releasing all that unforgiveness and um, expectations that I had on people. And even though the, the Lord gave me words and showed me revelations, I, I would be with him, but then I would step ahead of him and try to control the situation. I didn't realize how much of a control freak I was. And one of the most um, things was I would use God's word without, this is one thing that I've been totally convicted of and I would manipulate it. And so I would have control of the situation, but in the end, God would get the glory. And that's not good. And today, I would like to give my gratitude to uh, 
to COVID. It may sound bizarre or weird, but I knew I knew something was about to happen because I hate to admit this and I'm doing it on YouTube and I'm so embarrassed that I'm doing, um, I'm repenting right here. And the thing is, is that I wanted things under my control. And I thought, I knew towards the end, I, it wasn't with a pure heart. And I thank COVID that, that, that this exposed my heart and that I got this infection through my whole body because I had to go deep within and know that I do have faith and it's time to step out of pride in my ego and and strive to be the warrior that he has chosen me to be. And I finally broke down when um, I was sick. I was so sick in this bed and I had all these um, feelings and emotions inside and it was a lot, of, my body was in so much pain. And he's saying, he said to me, he goes, by your faith, you're gonna be healed from the inside out. But right now you have to be sick. And I was just like, oh man. And I felt it before I even got COVID. I was working like with it and I saw what it did to people. And I was just like, Lord, I was just like, what's going on with these people? And every time I would walk into someone's room, you could feel their spirit and some of the feelings and emotions that they had. It wasn't COVID per se, but it was like loneliness, um, heartbreak, unforgiveness. Um, it was just a lot of sorrow. And each room that I would walk into, I would feel that familiar spirit, but it was in a different um, way. And the the last night that I worked, I remember starting at the beginning of the hallway and just working my way down. And I was just like, Lord, I said, I know that you're here in the middle of this chaos, but just get me through this night. And I was just beside myself. And when I drove home, I just broke down and cried. And I was crying for those people, but I also was crying because within inside me, I knew this familiar spirit and I just wanted to release it. And I was just like, Lord, I don't know how much more of this I can take because what I'm seeing is so destructive and just so, and I was like, it's not you. And he's like, I'm there, I'm within you. You have to search deep and um, to finish it off. That's why I'm doing these videos because I know I'm not the only one. And I do want healing. I, I'm in recovery with COVID this infection in my body and and I appreciate everyone's prayers and good vibes and you checking on me but the only person that can heal me is I know my faith within me is gonna heal me and I need to focus on that and it's so weird because I've never really focused truly on me for the purpose of the kingdom because I know my healing and my relationship with Jesus is going to help someone. And I want to close out in um, with my devotion this morning 
because it totally was like, um, it showed me that I am, I, I have forgiven myself and I'm in the process of recovery. And this morning, you know, I didn't have anybody to lay hands on me. So, and I have the power of healing in, in the palm of my hands. And so I laid hands on me this morning and then I read this devotion and it just like blew me away. Cause you know, you know that you're healed. Enjoy the abundance. Enjoy the, the love that he's sending to you. You have to be willing to have it in your hands. And so the scripture, this is out of um, Eric Gilmore's book, To Love Him. And the scripture that he uh, gives is Matthew 10, 37. And I'm just going to read it. Usually I don't because I encourage you to look it up. But um, so Matthew uh, 10, 37, I'm not going to read it per se because I, I do want you to look it up. But I'll just give you a... a I'm prephrasing it. So what it's basically saying is, is that if you love other people before me, then there's no point of, it says, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he, he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And then he goes on on the um, next page. It says, women, do you want to marry a man who is more in love with his mom, mommy than you? No, you want to marry a man who loves you. Men, do you want to marry a woman who retains a love for her ex-boyfriends? No, you want to be her one and only. Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying, if you want to marry me, then love me. If you want me to be your bridegroom, then let me be your bridegroom. Don't tell me you want to marry me when you love everybody else more than me. Don't tell me you want to marry me when you still have love in your heart for those other things. Jesus goes on to say, he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Matthew 10, 38. Jesus only receives exclusive love. You can tell if your love needs re revival because you start feeling numb. You start feeling like your ears are muffled. You start feeling like your heart is hard, even heartless. You start feeling like the word of God has lost its luster. You start feeling lethargic. The name of Jesus becomes stale in your mouth. Truths that used used to make you make make your heart flutter have little to no effect on you anymore. You start to scream out in prayer because the gentle nearness has become foreign to you. A. B. Simpson said, "Men who raise their voices must live far away from him." No matter how amazing the experiences we've had in the past, we need a fresh inflow of the life of God to keep them real to us. And what I got out of this morning, sometimes death to old things is not a bad thing. Actually, to be re to to give birth, sometimes you have to put dead things away. And with self-sabotage, I found with me, I was desperately holding on to something that has been dead for a while. And with COVID, I've learned that it just takes over your whole body, your whole body. And you just have to have faith. And husbands and wives you have to pray. I learned this this morning after watching this sermon. Like I had it in me, but I was wondering like why um, God has been putting it on my heart about the family unit. It's because we are responsible for our healing. And 
all these things that sa- um, self sabotage brings to you is about to just dis- it's trying to destroy that healing because they know the enemy knows that if you truly heal and go through this process and have these things that happen to you in your childhood and other things in your life happen to you if you don't if and he knows if you don't forgive and you idolize those things in your life and you try to lo- love um other people more than you love Jesus whew. He knows if you truly heal, the generations to come are going to be healed. And there won't be no, yeah, there, there's always going to be hurting. But if you stand back and actually heal from those things, oh my gosh. That is unconditional love no matter what. No matter what. No matter what sickness comes. And I truly believe this is what's going on, especially with COVID. I mean, and I truly believe that's why he's had me read Hosea because he's establishing Hosea's all around the country and all over the world to have pure, unconditional hearts. Because we got to love those people. We got to heal within ourselves to heal other people, to pass on that unconditional love. I mean, whew, I can go on forever, but this is Transparent Tuesday. And um, I encourage you today to allow the, the Lord or your divine power to search your heart. Search your heart within, and when the truth is revealed, know that you are healed. Be like, I have faith that I am healed. And you are healed. Walk in that healing. And I know I am healed. Because my faith has healed me. And I continue. And continue to lay hands on yourself. Because you got that power. You got that power. If you believe. If you. You have to believe. You have to believe. And lay hands. Lay your hands. You you have healing hands. You are a healer. You are a healer. And it starts with you. It starts with you. And husbands and wives, lay hands on each other. That's why you are married. That's why you are married. Because they're, that faith, that faith that marriage brings is a true blessing. And I can't wait. I'm doing this for for myself, for my family, for my boys, for my husband's boys, for his family. It starts within. Just, Just be in his presence today. And I love and care for each one of you. If this blesses just one person today, I... You know what? I thank God that that he is healing you. But you have to see it within yourself. God bless each one of you.